Hi, my name's Nick Paris, and uh, I'd like to show you around the iSpeed 7 camera today. Um, we're just going to give you a quick walk around and show you what you get with the camera, uh, and then how you control it and what the options are. So, first of all, let's just take you uh, through what you get when you order a high-speed 7 camera. I'm going to put this out the way, and I'm going to show you what you get in the case. So. You get um, a power supply for AC adaption through to the camera with a suitable AC lead. Um, you then get um, all the connection cables you require. So you get a trigger switch, uh, you get a I.O. cable and that allows you to connect to things like iRig and GPIO and things like that. And then you also get an Ethernet connection uh, and a uh, HDMI lead. So this all allows you to then control the camera appropriately with all the correct cables. With the camera, uh, you also get software pack. And so what this comes with is a USB stick that allows you to download the latest software from our website. And then license keys. And dependent on what ver versions you go for, there's a uh, control software that you'll download and control the camera with and with that comes a really nice thing which is analysis software and so that's pro analyst introductory version um, and then if you go for the pro option of the software there will be a further license dongle here and um, you then get the pro analyst light uh, both those software are really powerful for analysis and we can go into that on another video but uh, yeah, so you get the software in the pack. So it's a nice Peli case solution, custom foam, the power supply and uh, the camera fits in here, everything to keep the camera safe uh, when it's not in use. So now we've seen what the camera comes with. Let's push that to one side and we can now look at the camera. And so um, here we've got the camera and um, essentially this is a uh, top end of the range for us uh, camera. It competes out there with all of the cameras uh, at the highest end of performance. And so this is the iSpeed 7 series. You can get it in a 717, a 721 or a 727. And so those have different speed uh, tables and uh, we can show you that in the data sheets. So let's just walk you around the, each of the features. So at the front of the camera, we've got a Nikon F mount lens as standard, but this is also user changeable. And so we can change that for a Canon EF mount. And so you can change that to be uh, Canon EF compatible, or if you wish, um, you can also connect it with a C mount lens. So if you're doing, uh, you want high sensitivity and you're only using a small area of the sensor, you can use a C mount lens plate. This Nikon lens mount also comes with an optional shutter. So you can then have a shutter that blocks off the sensor and uh, keeps it safe in laser use or things like that. As we walk around the side of the camera, you can see here uh, this side, there's not much to see on this one. And then if we look at the rear of the camera, we can see the, all the connections that you're going to use to interface to the camera. Let's walk around them. You've got power input here, 12 to 36 volt uh, input here, quite a wide ranging input. We've got HDSDI output for a BNC run to a, a high def monitor. We've also got HDMI output. If you're using a large monitor in a facility, then you can see a really nice high resolution image. We've also got USB 3, so you can save the video from the camera to the USB 3 if you wish. So that's really a quick, convenient offload if that's what helps your application. We've also got the gigabit ethernet connection, which is the main mode of control. And so that allows you to then both save and control the camera via that connection. We have an additional connection here that's for later use. Uh, this will be a future upgraded uh, controller. And then coming over to this side, we've got a power switch. We have trigger input. We have sync input. And then we have exposure output. And so the exposure output can also allow you access to our SILC, Synchronized Integrated Lighting Control. Now, 
That is part of our upgraded system, but that allows you to really integrate this camera with external lighting and lasers. So that's a real powerful feature. And then at the bottom here, we've got the I.O. cable, which allows you to integrate both iRig inputs, remote power, uh, GPIO and things like that. One of the real benefits of this camera is the fact that it's got integrated batteries. And so you can choose to have batteries in this as standard it comes without just because it's an option but that means that you can have one hour failover so if you get power failure on this power input the batteries automatically switch and the camera continues recording or, or saving or whatever the process there's no break in in process at all we've got a fan at the rear here with a filter and so that uh, filters in harsh environments and things like that that can be taken out and cleaned and so very easy to operate with that filter. On this side, this camera has no excess SD. Um, it's just a standard option of a camera, but if you chose to have a removable media, the excess SD from, from iX cameras, then you'd have a module on this side for accessing that excess SD. The handle on the top is removable, and so if you're in a tight space, you can take the handle off the top. And then on the bottom, We've got the tripod mount um, that allows for either quarter 20 or a 3 8 fixing. And so again, it can be mounted in very many different ways. If you're actually mounting it into a jig, there's also M8 fixings here, uh, etc. that you can gain access to. So both imperial and metric fixings on the base of this camera. One of the real benefits of this camera is its resolution. Many of the other cameras in this range are limited to one megapixel. They're either 1024 square or they're 1280 by 864, for example, uh, essentially one megapixel, which then limits them uh, in their resolution at the lower frame rates and also the performance as the frame rates increase. This camera is 3.1 megapixel and allows you to record at that rate right the way through uh, to eight and a half thousand frames and then right the way up to the maximum of this camera, which is 2.45 million frames per second. So let's now talk about um, the software. And so the camera comes with by default with software. Uh, you can control it in two ways, actually. You can control it via PC software, which it comes with, or you can go for an optional touchscreen unit. And uh, we'll talk about that a bit later. So the software is really nice and easy to use. It's got all the powerful functions that everyone might want to use in it. And it allows you to simply connect to the camera, go to the capture tab, set up all the parameters you need in the software, and then go uh, to a recording, make a recording, trigger the camera, go to review, review the event, put a marker at the beginning and end of the video uh, to then save down to your preferred location, whether that's the PC that you're controlling it with, a network connection, the internal SSD, we can put an internal SSD in this uh, up to two terabytes, or an external removable XSSD that you can then save to remove, and then you've got the video in a mobile format. So that allows you lots of different things uh, and ways to save the video. So let's talk about some of the other options for this camera. So obviously the camera can come in a monochrome sensor or a color sensor. Um, the color sensor obviously uses a Bayer format uh, filter. And so the sensitivity difference between the two is again, three to four times uh, for a, a color camera and a mono is more sensitive. Then we've got the memory that you record into. So inside the camera, is what we call the circular buffer memory and that can be anywhere from 36 gigabyte right the way up to 288 gigabyte and so allows you to record for a longer period of time into that buffer and we can divide that buffer up if need be uh, to have multiple recordings in quick succession for example then we've also got options for um, reduced shutter and so uh, as standard, the camera ships with 225,000 frames per second with a one microsecond minimum shutter. 
We can reduce that right the way down to 277 nanoseconds at uh, 1 million frames, or we can go right the way up to 2.45 million frames at 168 nanoseconds. So this is a really, really powerful uh, camera with a very short exposure time as an option. We've gone through the lens mounts. Again, we can have a Nikon F, uh, a Nikon F with a shutter, a Canon EF, and a C mount. So you can choose your preferred lens options. Earlier, we spoke about the control touch unit. And again, this is a really easy to use touch screen. It allows you to again, connect to a single camera. You can go through, select your speed, select your shutter, make a quick recording, play that back very easily via dragging on the, on the screen, and then choose to save that down as a video. So that's completely independent of the PC software and allows you to have, you know, with the use of the batteries in the rear of the camera and the control touch unit, that allows you to have complete AC free operation of the camera in remote operations. So it's, it's a really powerful unit. So that really concludes uh, my overview of this 7 Series camera. Um, please contact us at iX Cameras if you want to have a demonstration of this unit. We'll be more than happy to talk with you regarding your applications. And hopefully uh, you might soon own one of these cameras. Thanks very much. Bye.